Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, welcome. So um, before I get this Q&A started, I would like to say if you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. I really do appreciate it. I have some goals and we are trying to grow. I would love to get 10,000 subscribers this year, okay? Okay. <laughs> and also, I have a little list here so I don't get sidetracked. Because y'all know how I get, I will get sidetracked, a little bit of ADHD, I will start rambling on. So, I'm not apologizing for sitting in my row because to be bad and bougie, you need to sit at home with a beat face and a robe. And drink your water like a hydrated flight attendant would do. So, I do have a question for you guys three options about my upload schedule so and i need you to comment down below what you think my upload schedule should be do you guys think that i should have a couple of uploads a week like for example monday thursday at 5 p.m eastern standard time every single week or do you guys actually enjoy my sporadic daily uploads that i do or I, you know, it's brought to my attention that I don't even announce when I'm going to upload. Like, for example, I can put on my Instagram, hey guys, this video is going to go up in a couple hours. I can start doing that. With just a couple uploads a week or my daily sporadic uploads that I do. I don't enjoy pressure of knowing that I need to upload um, Monday, Wednesday at 5 p.m. Um, and I wouldn't even really call it pressure maybe, but... I don't know. I just need your opinion. I need to know what you guys want to see. I need to know what you guys need to see and what you guys need me to do. That's where I'm at with it. I don't mind making like a little video for Instagram telling you guys that this video will be out in a few hours. I don't mind doing that at all. And I also don't mind doing a couple uploads a week um, if you guys don't like my sporadic upload schedule either. So. Let me know in the comments below what you want to see from moi, okay? All right, let's get started with the Q&A, okay? So these questions I pulled from Instagram. These are the questions from Instagram. Oh, <laughs> from Instagram. And then these are the questions I got from Facebook. I just took, um, these are the questions that I pulled from YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, so YouTube and then Instagram. So let's get started with the Instagram questions first. I had the least amount of questions in Instagram, oddly enough, considering that's where majority of my questions come from, like on a daily basis. But let's get started. I'm not going to say anybody's name. I'm just going to read the question. I'm just going to answer them as honestly and openly as I can. <laughs> Which airline is, was your dream airline to work for? My dream airline to work for was Emirates. I always wanted to work for Emirates from the very beginning because I just love the uniform. I loved how well the women were put together. I love all the travel des destinations that they travel to compared to other airlines. And I would love to live in the, the Middle East, of course. Like, I thought that I had the look. I thought that I had the aesthetic, but did I apply to Emirates? I don't think that I did. I don't think they were hiring at the time. Yeah, I don't think I ever applied. Should I apply? <laughs> did you always want to be a flight attendant? Do you have a degree in anything? Yeah, I always wanted to be a flight attendant. I, I, I always wanted to travel. I remember being a little girl. My grandmother always took us to the airports just to people watch. Um, we weren't necessarily going somewhere. I had been on that airplane when I was a little girl. Uh, a couple of times but anyway yeah we would always go to the airport and we would always people watch and while my grandmother was people watching I was watching the airplanes I was like oh my god I would love to be a flight attendant as I got older that did change I wanted to be a doctor I wanted to be a therapist so it was like always really my three options if I really think about it to be a doctor to be a therapist like a psychologist or a marriage counselor or a counselor for soldiers and then to be a flight attendant. When those first two things failed, I became a flight attendant. <laughs> to be honest, do I have a degree in anything? I, sorry, I think there's something in my mouth. Yeah, I have a degree in life. <laughs> um, 
Um, but no, on a, a complete honest answer, no, I do not have a completed four year degree. I went to school for psychology. Somebody said, can I on reserve do what you do? Drop all of the trips and pick up. From my understanding about reserve right now, as a reserve, you can't drop trips because you are assigned a trip. So scheduling will give you, for example, a two day trip. You can't necessarily drop that, drop that trip like how I dropped that trip. You can advertise that trip, but you will also lose guarantee, I think, or you will lose those hours if somebody decides to pick that trip. In all essence, no, you cannot drop a trip. If scheduling assigns you a trip, you essentially have to work that trip. But reserves, you guys can pick up on your days off. So if you have six days in a row and three of those days you're on call, and for those three days, scheduling gives you a three day trip, and then you're off these three days, you can come in from the three day trip and then you can pick up a trip that starts the next day you know, because these two days are your days off. That's what I know to be true. So you work the trips that are assigned to you and you can pick up trips on your days off which will add on top of the guarantee that you already have. Reserve guarantee is 78 hours you can pick up on your days off. <laughs> I do not know a lot about reserve guys. I don't, I really wish that I, I really need to know more about reserve for sure. Are you scared to fly the max when it's decertified again? Oh, when it's recertified. Are you scared to fly the 737 max when it's recertified again? No, I'm not scared. I'm never scared. Are all the evacuation commands the same or do you have to learn it for each aircraft type verbatim? Okay, th this is me being a politician, okay? Do not hate me for this. When you are in flight attendant training, you need to be a sponge and you need to absorb every single piece of information that you are being taught. You don't need to know the information just to pass a test, but you need to know the information just in case you have to use it in real life. <laughs> learn everything, absorb everything, reiterate everything, study everything, and you'll be good to go, <laughs> okay? Um, what are your biggest pet peeves with passengers or co-workers on long international flights? The only pet peeve I can think about when it comes to my work colleagues is that if they don't do service the way service is supposed to go, they try to change anything because they don't feel like doing something is like where I draw the line. Like just because you don't feel like doing something, Susan, doesn't mean that we're just not going to do it. Like that's how I feel. Anyway, when it comes to passengers for the long flights, when you have the long flight and you do the things that you're supposed to do, nobody is really, you know, bothering you you know even the yoga and the galley you know when you're trying to eat that really doesn't bother me that's if anything that's you know entertainment you know I understand people need to stretch it's a long flight you got to do what you have to do you need to keep your blood circulating but with passengers leaning on the doors is what really bothers me a lot during a long flight so it's like if a passenger, if we're like 10 hours in and they're up and they're walking around, that's fine. But when they come to the back, they use the bathroom, that's fine. But it's like when they get out of the bathroom and they start leaning up against the doors and you're leaning up, like, no, 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 can't happen. You are not allowed to lean up against the doors on any plane, no matter how long the flight is. Did you have another job before flying? I did. Um, before I was a flight attendant, I worked with healthcare specifically in the medicare department and i did customer service for a little while and then i moved over to provider relations and i worked on provider claims hospital claims i did HEDIS. i did uh insurance since it's specifically medicare since i graduated high school how do you manage time changes with your frequent travel? That's a really good question. I manage time change by sleeping when it's dark, um, no matter what country that I'm in. If 
I land in the morning, I take a nap, and I stay all the way awake until nighttime. When it gets close to 10, 11, 12 o'clock, it's time to go to bed. For the first year, that time change is difficult, and then after a while, uh, by my second year, I just started to get used to it. Your top three destinations. Okay, this is very difficult. This is difficult. My top three for now, because I have not been to New Zealand, I have not been to Australia, and I have not been to Korea. Those are the three places that I would love to go to. I would say my top three places are Hong Kong. My second favorite place would be Germany. And my third favorite place, Italy. <laughs> In that order. Mm. All right, so those are all the questions from Instagram. Let's move on to YouTube. Were you with any other airlines prior to the one you're at now? What kind of personality is best suited for being a flight attendant? And most importantly, what are the deets on the German X? Okay, those are three questions. <laughs> it's totally fine, it's totally fine. Okay, the first question. I was not with any other airline prior to being with the airline that I'm with now. What kind of personality is best suited? Is one where you can be a professional while you're working enjoy a little bit of banter enjoy a little bit of sarcasm and the type of personality that you don't take your work home with you when the flight's over whatever personality that is if you think you have those characteristics within your personality then that's when you know you can be a flight attendant um, i do recommend looking at a flight attendant she quit her job her name is she worked for delta her name is jamila lynn um i'll tag this video down in the description box below but it is an amazing video she she pointed out some great points about why being a why being a flight attendant was hard on her why it was hard on her physically why it was hard on her mentally and she you know she said some great points that are so true for some flight attendants some things don't get to them but for other flight attendants, like like for her, you know, things got to her and she just couldn't brush them off because there would be a weight on her. So I would honestly recommend you can pause this video, watch that video, come back to mine. I don't I don't care. Just make sure you watch that video. I mean, I agree with a lot of things that she said it said in her why I quit my job as a flight attendant and it just totally makes sense. So awesome video. So, you know, like I flew with um, a new hire recently, he's like he's been fine for a year and he's like yeah I just can't do this anymore he's like I'm done and and you usually find out within the first six months to a year if if this job is right for you because this job honestly guys it's not for everybody all right does being in the air for long periods of time bother you are you just used to it or do you have to get used to it also what is the longest layover you've had and where um, does being in the air for long periods of time bother me? Um, I've only had one situation to where I felt like I was getting restless, like my legs were getting restless. That was going from Hong Kong to Newark. I honestly felt like I was just going stir crazy, like I felt restless. But I've only felt like that one time, maybe because I didn't get enough sleep or because I wasn't hydrated enough. But that was the only time where I honestly felt like I was just bored to death you know being in the air for long periods of time it is just something that you have to get used to international flying is not for everybody and i've met flight attendants who used to fly international and they were like you know what just this just became a lot on them on their body and they just realized that doing a turn a couple times a month was easy enough for them and doing an international trip every couple months it's just a nice little getaway so and you know, you have your benefits too. Instead of working an international trip, take your benefits, fly over there, enjoy a couple of days, and then come back home. So however you want it to go, you can have it go that way. So yes, it is something that you have to get used to. The longest layover, I think it's either Hong Kong or Switzerland. I was there for about three or four days in each country. What has been the scariest flight you've experienced? Any medical emergencies? I can't give details. I've had a medical emergencies and I don't wanna say they've all been minor. Like a medical emergency at 40,000 feet in the air is a medical emergency 
on the ground. It, it's like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if, it, you know, you can't label it. Oh yeah, it was minor. Yeah, it was major. Like a medical emergency, it's just a medical emergency, right? So have I had it? medical emergencies? Yes. Um, what has been the scariest flight you've experienced? Okay, so this is my political answer. I can't say the destination. I've had a mechanical issue with the airplane. We had to divert. And I had a lovely layover in Nova Scotia. <laughs> that was the only scariest experience that I've ever had on an airplane. Like scarier than medical emergency. And what are some of those gadgets that you have that you have discovered to be useful for your layovers and while on board the aircraft? What is your advice on surviving probation in your first year? Tips on how to keep your things organized during trips. Okay, what are some of the gadgets you have discovered to be useful for your layovers and while on board the aircraft? So, oh, it's so funny. I know a lot of flight attendants have all types of like quirky, crazy little gadgets and stuff. Three gadgets for my layover. One would be an extension cord. You definitely need an extension cord because sometimes the outlet is not by the bed. Sometimes it's all the way across the room. So an extension cord, one. Two, one adapter is not enough. I need like two or three adapters. I need one to keep my phone charged, two for my laptop, and three, I need one for my flat iron for the bathroom and I need them all to be charging all and going at the same time. The third thing is my hot logic. Hot logic, you need that domestically, internationally, you need that everywhere for sure to warm up your food because not every hotel, especially in Europe, they do not have microwaves. On board the aircraft, okay, I really wouldn't consider it a gadget, but if I'm flying and I'm not working, even you know, sometimes when I'm working, I, I carry it with me. I make my own toiletry bag. So in this toiletry bag, I have a little bit of makeup, a charger, headphones, I have Clorox wipes, I have a Tide pin, gum, mints, just like my moisturizers and like toiletries that I need. So yeah, I make that little travel kit and I take it with me. Uh, with me on all my flights. Sometimes when I work, not all the time though, but definitely when I'm not working and I'm flying. So on my personal time, I always have that with me for sure. What is your advice on surviving probation in your first year? I think probation has changed now because I think now you have a mentor and you have like um, daily counseling sessions that you have to meet with. Um, I'm not sure what it's called developing I have no idea to survive your first year of probation do everything by the book whether or not people want to do it or not you never want to get complacent in this job so in order to not be complacent do everything by the book whether or not people give you a hard time because it's just not worth it at the end of the day it's your job not theirs so. tips on how to keep your things organized during trips during a trip, when I get to my hotel room, the first thing that I do is unpack my bag. I put my toiletry stuff in the bathroom, I hang up my clothes, I set my laptop out, and the exact way that I pack my bag when I leave for my house is the exact way I pack my bag when it's time to leave my hotel. The last things that I always need before I leave my hotel room is my flat iron. Like this is the last thing that I always do for whatever reason, so this, and my brush are the last things to go into my bag, always. Um, everything else is always packed. Everything, laptop, all my clothes, shoes, it all gets packed in there. And then my straightener and my brush are the last things to go in my luggage. This person said, I'm new, so forgive me. I'm sure you have been asked this question a million times. What inspired you to become a flight attendant? Would you recommend this career to someone else? Why or why not? Thanks. So what inspired me to become a flight attendant is that I always wanted to travel. If you want to travel, you need to look for a traveling career, a career that pays well, a career that you can have fun doing longevity. Being a flight attendant was always on my list of things that I would love to do. And I've always wanted to travel. I've always had like severe wanderlust um, as a child. I just always had like this deep desire to travel the world and not be put in a box and like have a hometown and home and hometown friends, which is nothing wrong with that at all. And you know, my father was in the military and 
um, not having that stability probably added to my wanderlust, you know? But no, there's nothing wrong with growing up in a hometown, seeing the same people that you've seen every day for the last 30 years. I'm not saying that there's something wrong with that. I just, I'm saying that I just do not want to be uh, put in that category. So move all over, do everything. But I recommend this career to someone else. You have to understand like when you become a flight attendant for me like you guys have to know like my personality like when i became a flight attendant i was not shouting it to the world i was not <laughs> i was not telling everybody because i'm just such a private person and then you know when you have that title as a flight attendant there are lots of questions and people all of a sudden that i didn't even speak to come out of the woodworks asking for stuff asking for buddy passes asking uh how you got the job and it was just a lot and i know that was happening because it happened to me and it happened to my friends and it was happening to everybody else around me who was, who graduated so i was like i'm never telling anybody that i'm a flight attendant i am a bartender i work for customer service i am it any and everything but a flight attendant um i just didn't like the attention and still to this day, like when it comes to dating, I just do not like the attention. I don't like the stupid questions. Are you part of the Mile High Club? Like just like ridiculous questions like that. So um, <clears throat> I would only recommend this job to certain people, only people that have touched me in my heart some way, somehow, where I really do feel like they're unhappy and that maybe this job could be for them. Apart from that, no, I'm not, I'm not recommending this job to uh, everybody that I meet on the street. <laughs> Hopefully that answered your question. Do you plan to stay in the airline industry or move on to another career in the future? It's such a great question. I love this question so much. When I got into this job, I realized how difficult it would be to go back to a nine to five at a desk and look at the same women I was looking at all day, every day. I have recently considered doing a career change. Yeah, so I'm not sure this will be a permanent thing or not. I am thinking about doing some other stuff and possibly leaving this career or maybe keeping this, this career and turn it into a hobby and maybe only do it once a month or we'll see. I'll keep you guys updated on uh, any career changes that I do, of course. But uh, as of now, I'm staying. Am I thinking about other career choices as of right now? Yes, I'm making moves. <laughs> Are you specifically assigned to international trips due to the pre-merger continental agreement? Is this still an option for the current flight attendants to transfer to international? No, I am not specifically assigned to international trips um, due to the pre-merger continental agreement. That agreement no longer exists anymore. I do international trips by choice, really, if that makes any sense. Since the merger, there is no longer an international base. Before the merger with continental, there was domestic and then there was international. I was international. When the merger happened, when continental merged with United, we all became one base, so domestic and international blend it together pretty much and since I hold a line I get awarded a domestic line I don't fly those trips and then I just pick up international trips hopefully that makes sense what made you decide to start your channel I wanted to be like a hobby do like PR part-time <laughs> I wanted to do PR part-time and I wanted to be a blogger part-time part like I just thought well, first of all, for a long time, being a blogger, I thought was just a hobby. I had absolutely no idea that people were doing this as a career at that time. Like, it wasn't that big uh, of a deal. Like, when Insta like I don't know if y'all remember when Instagram and Facebook wasn't that big, when Twitter wasn't that big, when these platforms, when YouTube was nothing, right? I love Beyonce so much. I'm like, oh my God, I would love to be Beyonce's PR. Like, I would love to do that. <laughs> that type of realm because I love my high-end fashion, I love my makeup, I love my beauty and stuff. So I was like, you know what? People ask me lots of questions all the time about the same stuff, about what I wear, hair, makeup, all that stuff. I'm like, why not be a blogger? Why not be a YouTuber? And I all honestly wanted to start, you know, vlogging a long time ago. I just never did. No shoulda, coulda, wouldas, okay? And that's not happening. All I'm saying is that I should have started a long time ago. <laughs> but yeah, I, I 
I wanted to start a YouTube channel because I did have some hobbies and being a blogger was one of the hobbies that I wanted to do. I'm very passionate about, you know, fashion and beauty. And I'm very passionate about my job actually. And I think that, you know, if I can, you know, inspire somebody to change something that they want to change about themselves, then I've done a great job. <laughs> Does turbulence ever scare you? Never. <laughs> Have you noticed any major differences in the types of trips you were able to hold since the merger? If so, what are they? Also, do most people now consider themselves to be working for one United Carrier? Or are there people still thinking of themselves as working for two separate carriers? Okay, yeah, those are really good questions. Um, yeah, to be completely honest, I don't know what I can hold because um, it always fluctuates. In the summer, I, I, I know sometimes I can hold four-day trips. So far this winter, I've been able to hold two-day trips, three-day trips. I've been able to hold 24-hour Aguadilla layovers, uh, Vancouver layovers. So um, if somebody you know was to say, I'll give you a million dollars, tell me what you hold. I could not tell you what I hold. I have um, no idea because that's how frequent it, it changes. Um, I don't know when this, I don't know when the stability um, <clears throat> is going to come. It's like, if I bid this, I know I can hold this. So I'm not sure. It's so funny, this question. Um, do most people not consider themselves to be working for one unified carrier? Yes, we do now consider ourselves to be working for one unified carrier. Um, but you know, some people are still petty. Some people are still catty. Like, yeah, I was pre-merger continental. I'm ex-con or yeah, I was pre-merger united. Like, you know, you still got that going on. In the beginning, you could tell the difference between who was continental, who was united. It's been a year now. Now you really can't tell. Now, you know, you can just guess, but um, now we're pretty unified now for sure, for sure. Some people are still very bitter about the merger. That's, that cannot be denied. Um, hello, Ashley, my name is, I won't say her name. I am, uh, I'm not sure what she's trying to say. Do they have programs for older adults that want to become flight attendants? Um, we don't have programs for older adults that want to become flight attendants. Um, we are not ageists here. You can apply to become a flight attendant at any age. No matter how old or how young you feel or you actually are, you get treated the exact same. Alright guys, I have two more questions left. Um, somebody asked me what tips you have to deal with jet lag. Uh, for jet lag, for me, I realized that in order to sleep through the night, sometimes when I come in in the morning from an international trip, to not take a nap, to stay up, push through, go out, get to your hotel room, shower, change, and go right out. Don't even spend any time in your room, and then when it gets dark, uh, go to bed. And I know that sounds crazy because when you're when you get in, from a trip, you are exhausted. Like the very first, you can't think about anything else but sleep. But um, going, it's called going straight out. We call it. Are you gonna Are you gonna go straight out? Are you going straight out? Going straight out on your layover um, helps with jet lag because you are so exhausted that you can just sleep through the whole night. This last question, whoever you are, um, her name is Simone. I know I'm gonna say your name. I I accidentally cut off the last part of your question. It says. Do you need to be promoted slash, and I cut it off. I know, I'm a terrible person. Um, if you're watching, please, 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 can you ask a question again in the comments and then I'll answer below. But hopefully, do do you need to be promoted? Um, maybe it has something to do with flying international. Um, no, you don't need to be promoted to fly international if that's your question. That is it, guys, for this Q&A. Like I said in the beginning of the video, um, I'm not sure if I said it in the beginning of the video, but if there are any other questions that you have for me about my career, about anything, you can leave them in the comment section below and I promise I will answer every single last question as best as I can. I'll try to be as honest and transparent with you guys as I can, but I really enjoyed it. I really wish I would have recorded it sooner, but I just had to be in the right headspace for it and I'm happy that I did it now. So. 
until next time i will see you guys in my next video don't forget to subscribe comment turn on the notification bell and i will see you guys in my next vlog bye